Okay, so um, our project was the detection of autism spectrum disorder by analysis of brainwaves using machine learning training. So what exactly is ASD? It is a brain development condition that controls lifelong communication, personal behavior, and social interaction. Symptoms depend on severity. Possible co-occurring disorders include ADHD, intellectual disability, language delay, and genetic syndromes. So our objective is to investigate human brain anatomy in relation to ASD, investigate the development of algorithms to detect ASD, compare algorithms based on performance parameters, validate the results obtained from implemented algorithms, and to suggest a suitable model for autism detection as an assisted technology to doctors. Uh, e.g. in synapses. Neurons are nervous system cells connected by synapses. Postsynaptic potential is equals electrical impulse from synapses used to communicate between neurons. EEG measures electrical activity through electrodes on the scalp and helps us to realize a much better understanding of the brain's activities and structures. The stages of EEG processing first is pre-processing, which is applying filters to clean and process the data. to block out different types of frequencies. Second is feature extraction, remove, removing unneeded signals like blinking and twitching from the data, and identifying signal signals through time domain features such as standard deviation or connection with other EEG channels. Uh, then third is feature selection, which is examining certain parts of the needed signals studying and studying one characteristic in various lights. And the last is classifications, which is what do the characteristics indicate. Uh, capturing EEG signals. Uh, there's th uh, there's multiple there's five types, five main types of uh, brain waves and uh, alpha waves, beta waves, and gamma waves are uh, the strongest. All right. So for alpha waves, um, this pattern of electrical activity is produced by the brain, and alpha waves often occur occurs when um, a person is doing relaxing activities like daydreaming, meditating, or listening to music. Basically, um, it's in a relaxed state of the brain. And then uh, alpha waves I can reduce symptoms of depression. And for beta waves, it's um, kind of like the opposite of uh, alpha waves. So it has a very high fre frequency and low amplitude brain waves. And occurs when uh, the person is in a very alert state and it usually has a stimulating effect. Um, instead of alpha waves uh, being relaxing, beta waves can lead to um, stress level, high stress levels, anxiety, and the inability to relax. And um, also a low amount of beta waves can lead to daydreaming, depression, and ADHD. And but uh, just in the right oh, just in the right amount of beta waves uh, can help a person focus and solve the problems. So gamma waves is um, a brain a way that the brain communicates within itself. So um, the brain communicates gamma waves through neurons in our brains, and it is the fastest brain waves out of all the types. Um, and also, it has the highest frequency. And um, gamma waves are, yeah, as I was saying, gamma waves are the fastest and it has a lot of benefits. And but and it, it can also cause a lot of conditions like epilepsy and schizophrenia. OK, so next we're going to look at um, the actual experimentation part of our um, project. And this includes taking the uh, EEG data that we've recorded and filtering it using uh, mainly three different types of filters. So um, to summarize what the previous presentation said, um, the low pass filter basically only allows for 
lower signals to pass through and it attenuates signals above the cutoff frequency. And it's basically used for smoothing the image so that if you have like little bumps and stuff which are at high frequency, so peaks and things, all of that will get um, cut off. Then the second type of filter is the high pass filter. And this is a filter um, that works in the opposite way of a low pass filter. So it allows for higher signals to pass through and it attenuates um, signals below the cutoff frequency. And this is used for sharpening the image um, in the fact that if you have peaks or um, sharp, thing, uh, sharp points in your graph, these will be more visible with a high pass filter. Then we have the notch filter, which attenuates frequencies within a certain set of bounds. So um, it kind of removes what's in the middle, while the bandpass filter does kind of the opposite in the fact that it, on it only allows frequencies between a certain set of bounds. So then we're going to look at the 1020 system, which is a way of um, recording this data appropriate to the way we can properly collect them. So um, as we said in the beginning, um, data is collected by putting electrodes on the scalp and the 1020 system is used to describe the location of where to place these electrodes. Um, and this system ensures that the inner electrode spacing is equal and the placement is proportional to the skull size and shape. On the picture on the right, you can see that um, each of the locations of the electrodes are labeled um, with a letter or a letter and number. And these specific channels are what we use to collect our own data. This is an example of one of the graphs we got, uh, our raw EEG data for applying any filters. Um, and this was from one of 34 different samples. So now we're going to talk about how we actually um, use these filters in code um, and what it's going to look like once we use this after we use a filter. So um, for example, uh, filters were created using scipy.signal.butter and um, I'm going to quickly explain how butter works. It has various parameters and this includes the order of a filter and its critical frequency and this is kind of determining um, what kind of frequencies, to, like what specific frequency to allow and what specific frequency to cut off. Then we have the exact type of filter. Um, so this goes back to low pass, high pass, and notch filters. And then our fourth parameter is either a digital or analog filter. And for ours, we use digital ones. And we also looked at the sample frequency. And for this particular experiment, it was with 128 hertz. And here we have the results of the previous graph, but this is after filtering. And um, here we had a low pass filter applied and you can see the image was kind of smooth in, in the fact that some of the sharp peaks are now more of curves. So um, now we're going to look at future steps. And this includes uh, machine learning algorithm algorithms such as the support vector machine and deep learning to train the machine to detect symptoms of autism. And this is done using the data we currently filtered and recorded. And we'd also like to use these algorithms for an aid to doctors who will look after patients with ASD. All right, thank you.